Hey guys, it's Irene Sprays and I am back with another video. So let's just jump right into it. Here are some products that I'll be using today on my client. We'll be doing some medium knotless in the color 27613 pre-mixed. The braiding hair that we'll be using will be Expressions braiding hair and it is 52 inches. Now, let's jump into how I prep my client's hair for braids. Now she's already come in with her hair already washed and ready to go. So now I am just detangling and making sure that her hair is easy to maneuver while braiding. So I like to use the brush and start at the ends of my client's hair and work my way up. So now that I have her hair brushed out really good, I'm going to take the cream and shine. I'm going to apply it generously through her hair. I want to split her hair up and make sure the product is in there really, really good. And the reason why I do it like this is because it allows me to be able to get the product in really good without having to use so much because this product can be very oily. And this is how the, the ending results turned out. So I like to take a little bit of the Breathing Braid Gel and I put it on its own plate. That way I'm not dipping my fingers in the product. Now what I'm doing is I'm separating the front of her hair and I'm going to put them in individual plaits. And then I'm going to start with the back. And I like to do it this way because I feel like the process goes by a little bit more faster in my opinion. So this is the way I like to do them. So now that I have the left side of her hair already split into half and I have plaited it, I've done the right side the same. So now I'm going to go ahead and start braiding the back. So of course I'm going to start with my first row in the back. Now, typically I do between four and five braids to the back of my client's hair, but depending on the person's head size will determine how many braids they would have back there. So I do take a little bit of the even braid gel and I like to put it pretty much around the perimeter of her hair. And I like to make sure that I place it to the scalp and then use my parting comb to make sure that I clean those parts up. So now that I have the product in, here is my hair setup. This is a clothing rack that I purchased from Walmart. It was about maybe 11 bucks. And I like to use this rack to prep the hair. Prepping the hair saves so much time, so this is what I use to do so. And then also this braid rack allows me to lay out more hair than the wooden racks do. I'm not typically a fan of those wooden racks, so this is my way of doing it. So if you watched my videos before, you know that I like to split all of my clients' hair up into three sections of their natural hair. And then I take a piece of that braiding hair and I put it between my index and thumb finger. And I apply that in, I intertwine that in between two and three times before I start to add in another piece of braiding hair. Now, I had to take this out and the reason why I took that piece out was because I started to see the blonde at the roots. So I typically try to not see as much blonde as possible. So what I did was is I downsized that piece of braiding hair that I originally started off with and made it smaller because by making it smaller it allowed me to hide that piece of hair much better. So now what I'm doing is, is I am braiding it in about two to three times before I add in another piece of braiding hair. And what I'm trying to do here, you guys, is I'm trying to thicken up this braid as much as possible because the more blonde I have, the more easier it will be for me to tuck and hide her natural hair. Now, what I'm doing here, you guys, is I'm taking the blonde and I'm rolling it over the black, which is her natural hair, so I can try to hide as much as possible. Now, this is not the easiest process to do, being that her hair is black and she would like to have blonde braids. So I'm always honest with my clients and I always let them know that I will try to hide as much as the black as possible. Now, trust me, I've seen some YouTubers on this account who can really, who have really mastered their craft in tucking. Tucking is not the easiest process um, at all. So, um, you know, if you're not the best at tucking, always let your clients know that you will do the best that you can. And that's what I do. I just do the best that I can. This is very, this is a very tedious job. And so it can be typically hard to do if your client has thicker hair. Sometimes if the client has thinner hair, it's a little bit more easier to tuck it. And depending on how big the braids are, it'd be even more so easier to tuck it. So with this sizing, we're doing medium and her hair is pretty thick. So therefore, it's going to be a little more challenging. So of course, you can see the black starting. But my goal is to try to tuck away as much of the black as possible. Because she wants her braids to be hip length, I'm going to take an extra piece of the 52 inch braiding hair. And I'm going to add it in as I braid to extend the length. Now, this is how you extend the length. 
you want to go ahead and start braiding as you were originally doing before and then take the, that piece of braiding here and add it between your index and thumb finger and intertwine that in and that will create the extended length so that way your client's braids are a little longer now if you have too much length you can always take your scissors and you can raise it off which you don't need but just make sure that when you raise it off you are not cutting straight across and that you're cutting at an angle down and by you cutting the hair downward it allows it to have more so of a tapered look and not a blunt cut all right you guys so now that we have the 613 and the 27 in of course you're going to see some flyaways so as you can see here close up on camera you're going to go ahead and take your scissors and try to cut off as much of those flyaways as possible and this is how it should look so this is our first braid like i said you guys i typically try to do between four to five braids on the row um, so what i like to do is is go ahead and pre-part out those parts so i can kind of see how many braids i'm going to have to end up doing and so like i say all the time each client's head sizes differently and their sizing of their heads are different so you're not going to do four on your client today and another four in your client tomorrow no you want to do it based off the client's hair and this is how you end up doing the best job is when you offer the braids based off of your client's hair and not everyone the same so here are my five that i'll be doing and again i'm going to try to tuck away as much as that black as possible and we are going to knock these braids out the park so with that being said let's continue watching All right, you guys, so now that we have finished this first row, it is a lot of work trying to do this, you guys. Trying to get as much as that black hidden away as possible is uh, so much work. So here it is, you guys. I have four rows. So typically, I do about three rows for most of my clients, but if their head is a tad bit bigger, I have to do four rows. So now that I've done four rows straight across, it is now time for me to start U-shaping those parts. So of course, I'm gonna take my Irene's braids precision parting comb and I'm gonna go ahead and start parting her hair. 
And then I'm going to apply a little bit of that even braid gel to perfect those parts. So remember, um, as I've stated in other videos, that I like to U-shape my parting so that way the braids can look more fuller. Sometimes when you're getting knotless braids done, you guys, and let's just say your hair isn't the fullest and your client, your, um, sorry, I'm sorry, your stylist, um, isn't sure about how to make your braids look fuller because knotless can look stingy. You want to, you know, say, Hey, I watched this YouTuber named Irene's braids and she mentioned to U-shape the parting because it allows a more fuller look. And maybe you can show her this video and see what she says. And you guys, don't forget to drop some comments in the comment section. Let me know what your thoughts were. Do you struggle with tucking? Do you struggle with um, braiding your hair, your client's hair with color and trying to hide most of the black? I mean, what do you do, you guys? Because you can't ask your client to come in with blonde hair because they want blonde braids. Like, what is your thoughts on tucking and clients that want blonde, no pink and purple? Because this client in my chair now, you guys, we do it all. She does purple. She'll do pink. <laughs> she has fun with her braids. She does the blonde. She does not care. She wants to have fun with her braids. And that is what we do. So the next time she comes in, we're going to do pink. Because she loves to have pink, you guys. And I call her my little anime. Because when she has the pink in, she loves one of the little anime uh, characters off of Netflix. Or, you know, a little cartoon show. Is it called anime? I think it's called anime. But anyways... Yes, y'all. So we'll be back to show you how that pink turns out. But for now, let's continue watching. you guys so now that we're towards the front I want to show you why I split that hair in half and what you should do with it so what I'm doing here is I am pretty much connecting what I did in the back to the front so I just clean up those parts I add a little product I comb it through and pretty much what I've done in the back I'm gonna just match it now I did try to add up a little blur on my clients face because she doesn't like to be on camera so I'm trying to blur her out as much as possible. But most of my clients know when they come here, it's kind of hard to do that. But I try to respect their privacy because, you know, they don't sign up to be on camera. But I always ask if, you know, they're okay with it to allow me to record because this is how I'm able to show my portfolio. And so that way others can book. So they're pretty cooperative, but I try to, you know, meet them halfway give them a little privacy when they ask for privacy but yes you guys so that's pretty much what I what I've done so to me this process is quicker but you know to each his own you find that you know shaping out your party without doing it this way is easier for you um, definitely do it that way but this is the way I like to do it yeah you guys so I'm enjoying doing this 27 on her it's fun and you know it's different and it kind of reminds you that, you know, darker skinned women can pull off certain colors. My, me, myself, I really would like to try ash blonde, but I'm so afraid to try it because, I don't know, I just feel like it may not look good. So I always stick with jet black or just natural black. I think the lightest I've ever gone is a color four, but I want to start playing a color a little bit more, but I'm afraid to, but we'll see. But yeah, you guys, so this is how it turned out. Her parts look so good. They're so clean and so precise. The blonde looks good. Like I said, I tried to tuck as much as the black as possible. And I think that it turned out well. So she loves her braids. She always loves them. This is like her second install with this blonde. And we'll be doing pink next. So I'll definitely come back to show y'all this pink. So y'all can see my little anime with her pink, honey. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and thank you so much for watching. And don't forget that if you would like to book you an appointment, 
You can click the link in the description box below, or you can visit me at www.irenesbrace.com to book an appointment. And please, please, please subscribe, like, and comment, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.